Cobbiz. Hello and welcome to Cobbiz. My name is Shalin Verma and in today's video we will understand the standard operating procedure or the SOPs released by the CPCB for the utilization of hazardous waste contaminated barrels and containers. In 2021, CPCB revised the standard operating procedures for the utilization of contaminated barrels and containers and released a checklist of minimum requirements for facilities to ensure the safety of workers, the environment and the public. These SOPs were made applicable on entities that handled contaminated barrels and containers. Apart from the pesticide industry, every other industry is that dealt with the manufacturing and usage of chemicals, oils and lubricants along with the TSDF operators were to follow these SOPs. So, as per the SOPs, these entities have to ensure that the chemical containers after they are emptied are stored, cleaned, discarded and reused in a safe and eco-friendly manner. After being emptied, containers have residues of chemicals and hazardous waste. So a two-stage cleaning process is required to reuse these contaminated barrels and drums. First, the items must be washed with hot water, a caustic solution or a detergent. The caustic solution should not be more than a robust 2% concentration. Next, a fixed nozzle should clean the items with the fresh water. After treatment, the wastewater must be recycled. If the unit is producing plastic granules, they are also advised to follow the same two-stage cleaning process, followed by shedding units. Now, let's move forward and understand the SOPs with respect to the utilization of these containers. When storing and handling contaminated barrels, the entity must obtain those containers that are compatible with hot or cold water, detergents, caustic solution, etc. and do not produce flammable or toxic gases. Containers or drums contaminated with chemicals from pharmaceuticals, food processing, cosmetics, textiles, paint formulation and beverage industries can be cleaned if they don't display the characteristics of class C3, C4, C5, C6 and C11 of the Schedule 2 of Hazardous Waste Management Rules 2016. Also, it must be ensured that these containers don't release toxic gases upon contact with air or water. To prevent rainwater intrusion, the unit must have separate covered storage areas for contaminated and clean containers. The sheds must have proper slope and spillage collection pit. An area for the utilization of hazardous waste should be designated for dry draining drums contained with oils and lubricants. These drums must be inverted on a sawdust bed for 2-3 to three hours before washing. The oil and lubricant soaked dust must be collected and sent to a TSDF for disposal and the liquid effluent will be directed to the effluent treatment plant for treatment. Next. Installation of nozzles with multiple jets to ensure that water reaches the entire inner surface of the containers. Provide a bund wall along with the container storage and washing area with a proper slope and collection pit for the channelization of spillage to the effluent treatment plants. A separate area should be available for washing the outer surface of containers with a hose pipe, proper drainage and collection pits. The effluent generated should be recycled or sent for proper treatment to a disposal facility. The effluent generated should be treated by neutralization, coagulation, sedimentation, aeration and filtration and recycled in the washing process. The effluent must be monitored quarterly for the parameters specified in the consent issued by the concerned SPCB. These monitoring must be done through a laboratory accredited by NABL under the Environmental Protection Act and report must be submitted quarterly to the concerned SPCB. Also, annual returns must be submitted as per Form 3 and 4 respectively under the hazardous rules of 2016. The residues generated from drums, evaporator and sludge generated from ETPs must be packaged and temporarily stored in a dedicated hazardous waste storage area and sent to TSDF within 90 days from the generation of the waste as per the conditions stipulated under the consent and authorization letter. Now, to ensure operator safety, while opening drums containing chemicals that may release vapors, safety measures such as a properly ventilated area, using PPE kits and suction blowers are recommended. 
Also, the owner of the facility must ensure that residual matter in drums is safely transferred into a separate container for storage and disposal at the TSDF. Now, some duties of the owner of the facility has also been elaborated in the SOPs. For instance, maintaining a manifest system and logbook to record the source, date of receipt and chemicals or hazardous waste that is stored to aim for a zero discharge and recycle the treated wastewater, to submit quarterly and annual information on the quantity of used drum procured, cleaned, their source, mode of cleaning, quantity of wastewater generated and recycled and residue generated to the concerned SPCB, to maintain a passbook issued by the concerned SPCB wherein each procurement details of contaminated barrels should be entered. Finally, if there are environmental damages caused due to improper handling of hazardous waste like accidental spillage during generation, storage, processing, transportation and disposal, the owner of the facility will be responsible for implementing immediate response measures, conducting a site assessment and remediating contaminated soil and groundwater as per the guidelines on implementing liabilities for environmental damages due to handling and disposal of hazardous waste and penalty published by the CPCB. Now, if you are looking for the hazardous waste management authorization, pollution NOC or environmental clearance for your upcoming project or for your existing facility, contact our team of environmental expert at Cobbiz. Our team can provide a comprehensive assistance and a hassle-free experience for your business approval with a broad range of services. So that was all for today's topic. Please like and share if you found this information useful. Thank you for watching.